My name is Daniel Stryker, I'm a disease ecologist and I work at the MRC, University of Glasgow Centre for Virus Research and the Institute of Biodiversity, Animal Health and Comparative Medicine. I study zoonotic pathogens. These are pathogens that can be transmitted from animals to people. Climate change, land use change, urbanization, increased agriculture, all these things are putting species into contact that were historically separated. And so that allows these pathogens to jump between species. Another important factor is that human societies are just so much more connected than ever before. So that means when these rare spillover events do happen, we're able to spread at an unprecedented rate. Bats have been associated with a number of important zoonotic diseases beyond COVID-19, also Ebola, Marburg, Nipah virus, Hendra virus. For the last 16 years, my work has focused on rabies. Rabies is a horrifying disease with an almost universally lethal fatality rate. Globally, rabies kills over 50,000 people every year. In Latin America, where I work, the principal problem is rabies transmitted by blood-feeding bats. The bites from these bats uh, are often ignored. They're almost treated like mosquito bites, even when they're on people. And so when rabies is actively circulating in those bat populations, it can cause devastating outbreaks. This can be 10, 20, 30 people dying within a single village, and often those are children. The COVID-19 pandemic has really shown us the potential global consequences of zoonotic spillover from animals into people. And I think increasingly it's making us realize that we also need to start thinking about preventative measures. Can we potentially stop those viruses from emerging into the human population in the first place? One way that we can try to reduce the amount of disease in wild reservoir populations is through using vaccines. One successful approach to this has been the elimination of fox rabies from most of Western Europe. And that was done by distributing at mass scale vaccine-laden baits. When the foxes consumed these, they became immunized against rabies, and rabies was wiped out from most of Western Europe. For bats, baits just aren't going to work. That's because bats have specialized diets, and we're not going to be able to convince them to feed on anything in particular. A potential solution to this is a vaccine that would disseminate by itself we would use the bat's natural behavior to spread the vaccine for us. There are two possible ways to do this. One is called a transferable vaccine. In this case, the vaccine would be applied topically and spread from bat to bat according to their normal social or grooming behaviors. The key thing here is that those sorts of vaccines would only spread from the individual that was initially treated, and so they self-extinguish from the population. The alternative is something called a transmissible vaccine. These are vaccines that spread not just from the individual that was treated, but also from other individuals that were infected by that individual. If we wanted to tackle a larger scale effort, say to eliminate a virus from bats, transmissible vaccines offer a huge benefit in that they do have that capacity to spread from beyond the initial population that was treated. We're essentially letting the behavior and the dispersal of the bats do the vaccination program for us. One way to generate a transmissible vaccine would be to survey the viruses that are present in a wild bat population and select one which is naturally harmless and transmissible. We would engineer that virus in the laboratory to express a protein, which the bat's immune system recognizes and then generates an immune response against the virus that we're trying to control. We've heard a lot about the R number in the context of COVID and reducing the R number. In the case of a transmissible vaccine, we really may want to be increasing the R number just to a level that's above the R number of the virus that we're trying to control. All you need is for the transmissible vaccine to spread better than the virus that you're trying to target. We could potentially be eliminating the virus from the bat population entirely. Historically, vaccine transmission has been something that's been feared. That largely arises from cases like polio, which spread unintentionally and caused cases of paralytic polio disease from the vaccine strain itself. When we're talking about transmissible vaccines, though, however, we're thinking about an entirely different technology, where from the start, we're designing these vaccines to transmit safely. One of the key factors that does that is the selection of which virus we use in our initial engineering of the transmissible vaccine. Ideally, we want something that is harmless to whatever species we're trying to target, because if you start off with a harmless virus, then that vaccine will evolve in the wild. But if anything, it's just going to lose the protein that we've engineered into it, returning to the naturally occurring harmless wild virus. 
Zoonotic diseases really fall across the spectrum. On the one end, there's diseases like rabies, which are constantly spilling over into the human population. On the other end of the spectrum are diseases that spill over much more rarely, but have high consequences. Your Ebola's, your COVID-19's. Another branch of my work is trying to address that second part. How do we anticipate which viruses are going to cause a risk to the human population? And how do we work out where those viruses come from? The way we do this is to build machine learning algorithms on the genomes of hundreds of viruses for which we know something about their biology. We know what animal they come from, we know whether or not they infect people. Once we have those algorithms trained, we can apply them to newly discovered viruses in order to make a quick prediction of what animal they may have come from and their risk for spillover. As a proof of concept, we apply these algorithms to the SARS coronavirus 2 genome, and encouragingly, our algorithms did pick up a high risk of human infection from that particular strain. So if we had sequenced a virus like this before the coronavirus pandemic, we might have had some hint that this virus deserved a bit more attention research-wise. The COVID-19 pandemic has shown us the amazing ingenuity of scientists and public health authorities all over the world to react to a newly emerging viral threat. But it's also taught us the devastating effects that can happen despite those efforts, and really the benefits that we could get if we had things that prevent these viruses from spilling over in the first place. So I think we're in a really exciting time where we have the technologies evolving to be able to accomplish that. We just have to decide when, where, and how to apply these powerful tools wisely.